Howdy do, ex-communists. Welcome to Rosario, Argentina, where we are dealing with a situation that could blow up in our face called Operation Anonymous Curiosity. The aliens have determined that if they detonate this Argentine train yard, humanity will fall to their knees in despair. I personally think they're overvaluing our dependence upon trains. I feel a demo team at, say, JFK International Airport would be better for their purposes. But the aliens might be basing their understanding of humans off all those old westerns we broadcasted into space in the 1960s. I'm not going to complain though. Now, this is a bomb disposal mission, and they can be a nightmare. Know how sometimes when a meld canister is about to expire, I rush forward like an idiot and aggro more enemies? Bomb missions use this mechanic, except that when the timer runs out, instead of just losing the optional resource of meld, you actually just lose the mission. Oh, and also, thin men swarm these places like ants on a jolly rancher your little sister dropped in the backyard. Gross. That big red number in the upper right? That's our countdown timer. When it hits zero, the bomb arms itself. But if you can smack the top of these little green squares, which are apparently called power nodes, you add an extra turn to the timer. So basically, these so-called power nodes function as the bomb's snooze button. That's right, the aliens built a bomb that functions like an alarm clock. If that alarm clock was tied to snooze buttons scattered around your apartment and any one of your roommates could hit them. Can you spot the design flaw? The aliens really need to outsource their weapons engineering because whoever or whatever is doing it now has come up with ideas that Wiley e. Coyote would laugh at and reject. I start by moving Gemini Spark up to hit snooze like a white collar worker on a Monday. but. Unfortunately, our treacherous co-workers are already up, had their coffee, and dressed to kill. Gemini turns back the clock, and we get ready to deal with the Thin Man threat. Now, we saw one Thin Man move off to the left shadows, so I orient DJ Sucre and Evil Emison in that direction. And sure enough, someone tries to sneak up our flank. But DJ Sucre don't got time for that. The next Thin Man tries to run down the rail car, but instead, ends up getting run down by Gemini's rail gun. But it seems Thin Man number three doesn't appreciate wordplay and hits Gemini up for four damage. Gemini glumps up, hits snooze again, and I decide how I need to approach this enemy. I don't like anyone's chance to hit, so I do the more direct approach and have Gemini just take away his cover. So now Shiosk has an easy shot, and that's good because we want him to get a few kills as we need him to level up and get multiple med packs soon. What? Shiosk, how could you miss that? Wait, are you wearing your hipster sunglasses during a night mission? Why would you wear your sunglasses at night? So Okay, I have no idea what you mean by that, but thanks for complimenting my storytelling capabilities. But uh, luckily for us, Adrian Rod has been paying attention to how Jimmy responds to situations like this, and that's with highly invasive laser eye surgery. Now, here is where I break Splice Strategies Axiom number 19. You're not Magellan. Don't go exploring after everyone else has used their actions. And this is why that's an axiom. Suddenly, we find Citrus in a very compromising situation. Whenever you make a tactical boo-boo, the first thing you need to do is figure out how to limit the damage. First, we still have Evil Emisan's actions, so I move her up to see what she can shoot. Now, 47% chance isn't the best, but with Rapid Fire, we get two shots, making the odds more like 72%. And Evil Emisan does not disappoint. Now, the next thing you must ask is what is likely to happen. Most likely actions from the Thin Men would be either to shoot through the rail car at Gemini Spark because he's exposed, or for the Thin Men to move slightly to the right to flank Citrus. I fear Citrus getting hit more because he doesn't have the damage reduction abilities of Gemini Spark and could get crit quite easily. So I use Running Gun, move Citrus back to the unflankable cover, and put him into Overwatch to try and prevent the Thin Men from rushing forward. But in the end, Gemini's gonna have to tank it like a man. The first thin man roughs up Gemini. The second one then decides to rush forward, bringing us to trick shot shenanigans with 08 Citrus Architect. Through a window and a tight doorway at a narrow target with a shotgun? Will Citrus hit the shot? 
No. No, he won't. Come on, I can't let all the trick shot shenanigans hit. It'd take the drama out of it, and I'd never get to use that laughing dog sound effect. So, Gemini is hurt. Luckily for us, both Thin Men have used their actions to shoot, meaning we can move to advantageous positions and let people we need get promoted shoot first. She asks, w Wait, why are you still wearing your sunglasses at night? So I can keep track of the visions in my eyes. Visions in your eyes? You're not talking during the missions again, are you, she asks? <sighs> Speaking of visions in their eyes, Citrus has the gene mod hyperreactive pupils, which gives him a bonus to hit after a miss. And with that bonus, even with the negative 15% penalty that Rapid Fire has, he has very high odds to kill either Thin Man. So we feel okay at risking shots with others who I'd rather get the kill. The first chance we give is to DJ Sucre. He misses the first shot, but with Bullet Swarm, he gets a second chance and makes the best of it. That leaves the last Thin Man for Evil Emmy-san, who is really trying hard to make us forget she's responsible for the deaths of Maddie and Beat Over. And maybe, just maybe, there is a chance for her to turn this into a redemption story if she keeps shooting like this. Now we have used up a lot of ammo, so Gemini, Citrus, and DJ Sucre all reload. And as Evil Emmy-san hits snooze one more time, Shiosuke is dispatched to heal up Gemini Spark. Now if only Shios could aim his gun half as good as his hypo spray, he'd be promoted already. Quit your bitchin'. Okay, I am your commander. You do not get to talk to me with that tone. Oh, you, you, oh, you. <sighs> Gemini decides he should move away from Shios because he doesn't want to get associated with the hipster's insubordination. And as he does so, hello. This is a great situation. We know exactly where the Thin Men are, but they can't see us. Now, if Jimmy were on this team, the plan would simply be to just let her use Squad Sight and kill one of the Thin Men. Uh, but Jimmy isn't here, so we come up with a different plan. A more brilliant plan. I put Gemini, DJ Sucre, and Shiosk on Overwatch. Then, what I'm going to do is move Citrus up into a slot where it looks like he can be easily flanked. When the Thin Men get overeager and suddenly move to flank him, we'll have three Overwatches blasting them to Kingdom Come. Or, well, the plan would have been brilliant if the Thin Men hadn't become genre savvy and run in the opposite direction. I spend a moment kicking myself, but then move on to the issue of dealing with the two problems this creates. The bomb timer is at two, meaning next turn it's at one. Good math there. No one is even remotely close to a snooze button, so I really need to save Citrus's running gun for the next turn. I move Evil Emmy-san up to get a shot on one of the Thin Men, but I forget she's low on ammo so I can't use Rapid Fire. So I'm left with her taking a slightly worse than I'm comfortable with shot. It must be past Emmy-san's curfew, because her shooting is lights out. Adrian Rod tries to follow suit, but it turns out she hates that tacky advertisement behind the Thin Man more than the Thin Man. It turns out though the Thin Man really liked that advertisement, and spits his venom at her like it's an internet chat. So the timer's now at 1, and this is where the bomb disposal missions go pear-shaped. The only person who can get to one of these power nodes is Citrus using his running gun. but. Running that far out might trigger aliens. Sadly, at this point, we have no choice, and we have to roll the dice. And sometimes the dice come up snake eyes. You know, because the Thin Men have eyes like snakes. Get it? Yeah, I'm funny. With the bomb no longer a threat to go off, Citrus makes burned toast out of the closest Thin Man. But Citrus moves so far forward that none of the rest of the team can get shots off on the other two Thin Men. I try to see if a rocket can get them, but DJ Sucre is cruelly like one inch too far away. So I opt for the more convoluted strategy of using Gemini's collateral damage to destroy the Thin Man's cover and hope he'll rush forward to better cover and into DJ Sucre's overwatch. Luckily for us, that's exactly what happens, and the mix master of sweetness himself delivers. The other Thin Man, learning from his partner's mistake, decides to stay put, and makes like a wizard and casts Stinking Cloud on Citrus. And with that, the countdown timer's back to one. 
Fortunately, another snooze button is within Gemini's mechanical reach, and we have bought ourselves another turn. Citrus moves up and we find the bomb. Like so the bomb. now we just need to kill there. this guy so we can disarm it. She asks, can you please hit this guy? I'm not masquerading with you. you. You are a soldier. You can and you will start hitting targets. By Beetle Burst Fedora, you're pissing me off. I, I tell you what, it's a very strange mission when the soldier I rely on the most is Evil Emmy San. You're, you're making me trust Evil Emmy San, the betrayer, she asks. That, that's what your actions are bringing me to do. She got your predecessor killed, Evil, in her name. Are, are you comfortable with this arrangement, she asks? Yeah, she does cut your security, so you better shape up. So, countdown timer is back down to one. Emmy-san hits the snooze just, just one more time before we have to get to work. We just need ten more minutes, we swear. I spend the turn reloading and rushing Citrus over to the bomb. Next turn, Citrus and Adrian Rod take their poison damage, and I turn the bomb off. Thank you, it just had a single button and no encryption. Now, we need to get ready because next turn, it's raining thin men. Hallelujah. You want to set up your troops so that they're guarding different sight lines. The last thing you want is one thin man dropping in and pretty much everyone wasting their overwatch shots on one guy. But then again, they might drop on the train where almost everyone can see him before people shoot at the same target. So more thin men drop, Adrian Rod and Shiosk shoot and kill one off in the corner, and the last thin man simply tries to crush Evil Emison by jumping on her. <laughs> what does he think she is, a Goomba? Now, Shiosk, given what I just told you about making me trust Evil Emison, are you going to miss another shot? Now that's what I want to hear. Next up, Gemini and DJ Sucre kill their thin men meaning we can afford to get a little greedy. The only thin man left is the wannabe Italian plumber. Evil Emison's holding the taser, so she's already in position for the capture. We just need to deal some damage. Then, if Emison fails on the capture, we have Adrian Rod with one shot left, and it's going to be a high percentage one. Thus, we are following Splice Strategies Axiom number 9, don't attempt to capture something you can't kill. So, Citrus softens up the target, and it's time for Evil Emison to channel her inner Pikachu and use Thunder. <laughs> so ends Operation Anonymous Curiosity. Gemini Spark almost died, Evil Emison was the MVP, and we use that fact to sober up Shiosk, who has finally learned that no matter how much of a hipster you are, it's never hip to miss your targets. On the promotions front, thank heavens, Shiosk has finally gotten a promotion, along with Gemini and Adrian Rod. We're glad 09 Gemini Spark is promoted to Major, but sad that he'll be spending four days in the med bay. We strip him out of his robot suit, but it seems we've forgotten to take off his helmet. Great job, Dr. Malpractice. Anyway, Gemini gets Overdrive, which basically functions the same as the heavy ability Bullet Swarm. Nice. 12 Shiosk like beat over before him, is getting Sprinter, so that he has supreme mobility. And also, I'm seriously thinking about taking away his hipster glasses if he ever mouths off to me again. 10 Adrian Rod's decision is much tougher. We could give her Battle Scanner, like Jimmy, but I don't anticipate not having Jimmy on many missions. Disabling Shot, however, can be absolutely wonderful when we are dealing with aliens who have more health or preventing them from shooting at us when we approach them for capture. Or, you know, just disabling their ability to overwatch us by jamming their gun. For that reason, we're going to take the variety of options that disabling shot gives us. In base management, we have only 5 power left for construction, and satellite uplinks take 5 power. This means our next uplink taps us out. So I build a preemptive power generator just to be safe. I scanned for a little bit, and it's time to build satellites. Now, my next satellite uplink will be next to two other satellite uplinks, meaning we could, if we wanted, launch up to four satellites. But I feel the need for satellites right now is low, because for one, no country is panicking. The second reason 
is that we are on the brink of going to assault the alien base. When you complete that mission, panic lowers worldwide. So even if everyone panicked before the end of the month, we'd have a way of lowering panic before the month ended. I like to only build two satellites so that by the end of the month, I can try and get the perk for North America, but still have money left over for buying other toys if necessary. We scan again and Jimmy spills out of the gene tank. And now she can leap tall buildings in a single bound with her enhanced legs. I also like to think she hit her head when she showed off there. The roof can't be that high up. It's funnier that way. Scan some more and tactical rigging completes, meaning all my soldiers now have two item slots. Hmm, item slots. This is going to get really fun really fast. I'm a man who likes to say XCOM is easiest when you keep your options open. Having two item slots means you have more options than a stock trader. But while I'm fantasizing about options, a UFO shows up. But man, it's just a small little scout. We could handle those things with avalanche missiles. Now we have laser cannons. It hardly feels like it deserves a comedic bit like the other ones. Well, I suppose I could use this. There, internet. I used that sound bite. Are you happy now? So, the UFO looks like it crashed somewhere within the Tennessee foothills. I'm tempted not to go on the mission at all because, seriously, you telling me rednecks with shotguns can't handle this? Well, it's still our responsibility. And now we have two item slots, so I need to do some item shuffling. I am giving the taser to Shios because now that he has the sprinter perk, no one can run faster than him to tase an alien. I also get back to the engineering bay to make an extra med pack, scope, and nanofiber vest. The extra med pack and scope go to Adrian Rod. The scope is for obvious reasons, she's a sniper. The med pack is because I don't want to end up in a similar situation that led to Beatover's death, namely the fact that no one else had a med pack to revive him. The nanofiber vest confers an extra 2 HP to who's ever wearing it, so I'm giving that to DJ Sucre just to give him a little extra protection. With everyone all suited up, the party feels a little empty, because we're not going to be bringing our extra big hulking robot. We all give Gemini some get well cards, and we head on out. We're moseying on down to old Rocky Top to take care of some strange looking critters rutting around where they ain't supposed to be. Oh yes. Oh Bobby Percival, you know exactly what I like. And what I like is to make me some Ghostbusters references. Please join us next week as we get to show the world that we ain't afraid of no ghosts in Operation Paranormal Evil. Until then, I'm Splice, and let me tell you something. Bustin' makes me feel good.